Good night, Calvary family and friends. Welcome to Let's Build a Bridge. We're building a bridge back to the heart of God through studying of His Word. I want you to get your Bibles ready, get notebooks, pencils, and everything, highlighters, and we're going to enjoy studying God's Word. Call your family and friends together. Don't forget to like and share the video. Let's get right into it. So welcome back. Praise the Lord as we continue to build a bridge back to the heart of God through Bible study. So uh, last time we were together, we completed Acts chapter 26, um, Paul's trial before Festus and Agrippa, and it was concluded that there's no evidence to condemn him, but he appealed to go to Rome. He wanted to, he appealed to Caesar. And the Holy Spirit is going to use that. And Paul didn't mind the imprisonment because I, I thought he was an instrument just surrendered in the hands of the Holy Spirit. And, and he must take the gospel of Jesus Christ to Rome. Amen. So uh, today we're going to Rome. We're going to be in Acts chapter 27. I'll begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, thank you for the way that you have helped us through studying this book of Acts, O oh God, to see how the Holy Spirit is working, fulfilling the commission of Jesus Christ. And, and Lord, just letting the world know of his death and his resurrection for our redemption, O oh God. So thank you. And God, even as we are approaching the end of this uh, great book of Acts, Thank you for helping us to understand, and I pray that everyone who has been receiving the Bible study will be of a mind to share it and to send the gospel out to other people, that many will come to Christ and understand your heart of love for lost people. So God bless us tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to Rome. Uh, Governor Festus is relieved of the burden of this prisoner Paul and finally I'm going to send him away he's on his way to Rome let's open chapter 27 and when it was determined that we should sail into Italy notice again the we which means Luke the writer is in the team amen and that we should sail into Italy they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus' band. And entering into a ship at Adramitium, we, we launched, meaning to sail by the coast of Asia, one Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, being with us. And the next day we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go unto his friends to refresh himself. Uh, it's marvelous to think about that Paul is supposed to be a prisoner, but he is treated as an honored guest, and he's given all this liberty. And you can go on shore at Sidon and visit your friends and come back. What a trust this is. Because of the life that Paul lived, because of the integrity that he portrayed, amen, and it was all about projecting the image of Jesus Christ. Now, let's look at this carefully. Um, Festus assigned Paul, among other prisoners, into the custody of the centurion Julius um, to take them to Rome. Paul is granted these liberties. Aristarchus, you remember Aristarchus. We saw him back in chapter 24, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 20, verse 4. And Luke the writer traveled with him. Luke's detailed and candid description of the events in this, in this chapter gained him a distinction as a historian. And uh, I, I, may I interject something here? There are some people who are questioning the authenticity of the Bible, the authenticity of what Paul was trying to accomplish, uh, and so on in spreading the gospel. Let me tell you something. We're talking about Dr. Luke, a guy of high intelligence, a guy who um, investigated before he documented anything. You'll see that in Luke chapter 1, again Acts chapter 1, how he documented and he had eyewitnesses, himself was an eyewitness of some of these things. And, uh, and who can question this? So we know we have concrete uh, information given to us. Um, Paul is given freedom to visit his fellow believers in Sidon. Remember, on his third missionary journey, we saw that he stopped at Tyre and Ptolemais. Sidon is just next door to Tyre. 
and there were churches there, there were believers there. So the gospel was already infiltrating all these areas. So here we find a bunch of believers in Sidon and Paul was able to fellowship with them. Hallelujah. Now let's go on verse number eight, number four to eight. And when we had launched from thence, we sailed under Cyprus because the winds were contrary. And when we had sailed over the sea of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we came to Myra, a city of Lycia. Now, uh, you need to take time to uh, figure out what these names uh, mean to you, or it's going to complicate you. Um, so the sea coasts of Cilicia and Pamphylia are mentioned, but they're not going in. They're just passing along the coastline, but they stopped at Myra. All right, so from... Uh, from uh, uh, Caesarea to Sidon, then to Myra. And there uh, the centurion found a ship of Alexandria sailing into Italy, and he put us therein. And when he had, we had sailed slowly many days, and scarce were come over against Snidus, uh, the wind not suffering us, we, uh, we sailed under Crete over against Salmoni, and hardly passing it, came onto a place which is called the Fair Havens. Uh, nigh whereunto was the city of Lassia. So, uh, so from Myra, they went to the Fair Havens. Number of names mentioned that they were just passing by. Amen. So the next stop was Myra, where they changed the ships. Um, got over into a ship that was sailing from Alexandria in Egypt, going to Rome. That was the right uh, train, <laughs> train, the right ship that they jumped on, and uh, and so so they were going. Apparently, it, it must have been a cargo ship laden with grain, uh, coming from North Africa and uh, providing uh, grain to Rome. All right, so let's go on again, uh, verse nine. Now when much time was spent and when sailing was now dangerous because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. And he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, and not only of the lading and the ship, but also of our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things which were spoken by Paul. You know, throughout this chapter of uh, Acts chapter 27, there are some powerful spiritual lessons for us to learn. There are powerful things God is speaking to us. And as you search through this chapter, I know God's going to speak to you some powerful ways. This is one of those things we need to pay attention to. Not only the logistics of the travel, not only the documenting of the event, but what are the lessons that we are learning out of this thing? Amen. First of all, it says uh, it was the, the fast was now over. All right. Um, verse, uh, verse 9, because the fast was now already passed. When Jewish people talk about the fast, they're talking about um, the Feast of the Atonement. It's called a feast. But uh, there's no eating and banqueting in this one. This is a day of fasting. It's the day of atonement. And it's early in October, so we know we're in the fall time. You know what happens with weather patterns in the northern hemisphere in a fall time. You can expect rain, winds, hurricanes, uh, storms, thunderstorms, all these things you can expect. And so uh, it was around 8059. Fall means unpredictable weather, and Paul advised them to not sail. But the centurion, Julius, he listened to the ship owner and the guy who was piloting the ship. And uh, it, listen, those were experts at sea, but this is a man who hears from God. It's not a good idea to ignore the voice of God through his servant and follow the ideas of worldly people. I'll say that again. It is not a good idea to ignore the voice of God through his servant and follow the ideas of worldly people. They may have knowledge, but God gives wisdom. Amen. So they ignored Paul's warning and they're going on the journey. Verse 12. 
And because the haven was not commodious to winter in, the more part, this is the majority of the people there, whether they had a voting or just a consensus or whatever it was, the more part advised to depart thence also, if by any means they might attain to Finis and there to winter, which is an, an haven of Crete, and lie it toward the southwest and northwest. And when the south wind blew softly, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, loosing thence, they sailed close by Crete. In other words, they were hugging the land, uh, uh, sailing on the sea, but not going too much farther away. <laughs> there appears to be a majority that wanted to sail, and uh, they were going to Phoenix, Phoenix now Phoenix, uh, about 40 miles uh, out further on, on the same island of Crete. They set off, and it was, uh, it was calm, it looked favorable, and the man of God looked like he was saying something from another world, amen? But he knew the Spirit of God had given him that word, and suddenly the wind began to change. Verse 15, verse 14, but not long after, there arose against it a tempestuous wind called Euroclidon. And when the ship was caught and could not bear up the wind into the could not bear up into the wind, and we let her drive. In other words, we couldn't fight this thing. This is a sail. We don't have motorized boat, so we have to go with the wind. And before we try struggle real hard against the wind. We just let her drift wherever the wind would carry her. Listen, can I tell you today, it is a good thing to listen and counsel with servants of God, proven spiritual leaders who are trusted, people of integrity, people of biblical knowledge, people who can tell you with confidence how God wants to lead your life. Folks, listen, we need to be sensitive to the Lord, and God can speak to you directly. And as you study the Word of God, God can speak to you. In prayer, God can reveal things to you. Amen. Listen, when God begins to speak to you, and you know God wants to change your direction, folks, listen, please, obey God because there's blessings ahead. There are open doors ahead. There are opportunities ahead. And if we try to push back and we resist God, we're going to run into a brick wall. Amen. So th this is where they are. Let's read down a little bit more. It's a violent storm now, and they're just allowing the boat uh, to drift. How long will the storm last? Is it going to be a few hours, maybe overnight, and tomorrow we'll settle again, we'll find our direction, get back where we are. We'll find out as we go. Verse 16. And running under a certain island, which is called Clauda, we had much work to come by the boat, um, which when they had taken up, they used helps. I'll talk about the boat. Um, the boat, which when they had taken up, they, they used helps undergirding the ship and fearing lest they should fall into the quicksands, straight sail, and so were driven. And we being exceedingly tossed with a tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. So the next day, the storm is still raging, and they decided they're going to lighten the ship. You know what that means? They're going to jettison all the cargo so the ship can be much lighter. It, would, it, it will be harder to sink, uh, hoping to stay afloat. Now, this little boat we're talking about, is it's a lifeboat. The big ships usually have lifeboats. This was a lifeboat. It was, it was usually towed at the back of the ship, um, for emergencies or when they, if they uh, have to land, anchor at a certain distance from the shore because of the, the depth, they would, uh, they would offload and go in the smaller boat, the lifeboat, and get to the shore. So in this case, when the storm began to rage, they didn't want to leave the lifeboat, abandon the lifeboat, so they worked really hard to raise it, bring it up on board the big ship. And then they would undergird the ship. Undergirding means they'll have to send down ropes on both sides of the ship and tie it together so the ship wouldn't fall apart. It was a difficult thing to do. They were trained to do it nevertheless, but under these are under hard conditions. Amen. You know why? Because they did not listen 
to the servant of God. Amen. Listen, I want to bring this down to an end right now, and then I'll come back next time, and we'll continue on. It's going to be very interesting. God has something to say to every one of us. Praise God. Let me pray with you today. Maybe I'm talking to somebody. Your life has been rough, and you know it that you have been disobedient to the Lord. God's calling you back today, my friend. It's not too late. Come back right now. Say this prayer. Say, Dear God in heaven, I repent of my sins. I've been disobedient. I've been self-willed. Forgive me, Lord. Take me back. Make me your child. Wash me in the blood of Jesus. I ask Jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. And I thank you for restoring me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I believe what God did for me, He's doing for you. He said it in His Word. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Go out and tell somebody. Pick up the phone and call somebody. Tell them what you just did. I just gave my life to Jesus and I'm not going back. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me pray what your needs uh, before I go. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you that you're still available to us because the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same today. And I pray that you would minister to the needs of people miraculously, healing the sick, breaking bondages, breaking habits, Lord, liberating people from vices that hold to them, O oh God, and, and taking them into a downward spiral. Liberate those captives, O oh God, set them free to come to Jesus and to live for you, O oh God. Bless families together in love and harmony. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. And God bless you. Thank you for joining me for this Bible study. I hope you're enjoying this and you're growing in the Word, growing in your faith, and um, allowing God to prepare you for what He wants to use you. Now, uh, if you'd like us to uh, pray with you, you have a prayer request, you have a question, contact us with the information at the bottom of your screen. Our Friday night prayer meeting is 7.30 on Fridays. Our Sunday services are 8 a.m. and 10.15. And remember, this program, Let's Build a Bridge, as we build a bridge back to the heart of God through Bible study, it's uploaded every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. But it's always there. You can review it. And don't forget to like and share the video. So, Sister Shanti and I love you. Be well. Be safe. God bless you.